Your nails are short and you really want to dip them, but you're not sure what to do because you see so many people doing tutorials on long nails. Well, guess what? I got your back. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. Today, we're going to talk all about how to do short dip powder nails. It's a little bit different than dipping long nails because you don't have as much real estate on your nails to work with. So I want to go over some of the ways that it, I've learned how to make it a little bit easier on myself. You always want to push back your cuticles when you're dipping short nails or long nails. I've realized it's especially important when you're dipping short nails because you don't have as much room on your nail to apply the dip powder and apply the liquid. So you want to make sure that you push back your cuticles to get as much room as possible. And when your nails are short, you don't necessarily need to build an apex like you do when your nails are long. When my nails are this short, I don't worry about an apex. I have a very thin layer of builder gel on my natural nails that has a slight apex. And then when I'm doing my dip powders over top of them, I do two layers of the color and then followed by a layer of clear. And I'm using dip liquids to do this whole mani. So you want to make sure that you wipe a majority of the liquid off on your brush on the inside of the bottle before you even apply it to your nails. I've noticed with short nails, I'm much more likely to flood them than I am with long nails because I end up using a little bit too much liquid. This is something you're going to have to practice, how much liquids you actually need on your nails to fully cover them. And you'll notice that I flip my brush back and forth. So if I think that I'm almost at a liquid on one side of the brush, I flip it over and use the rest of the liquid that was on the other side that kind of pushed through. You don't want to keep adding more liquid onto your brush when you're doing short nails unless you absolutely have to because you're going to be more likely to flood them. So I start off with two dips of this gorgeous purple. The purple solid is Phoebe. How was the match day? And the glitter is outstanding. I got a red card for elbowing a girl in the neck. They're both for a Ted Lasso inspired collection coming from OG Dip Powder. And I have to be honest, I have never seen the show. So these names don't mean anything to me. All I know is these colors are absolutely gorgeous and I was so excited to use them. Whenever you're doing short nails, you wanna make sure that you trace around your cuticles right after you dip that's gonna be something else that's gonna help you from flooding your cuticles. You don't want to get that stuck in your cuticles and then you're more likely to have those thick chiclet looking nails if you don't immediately trace around your cuticles. And something else that really helps me whether my nails are long or short, is I like to pour the dip powder over whether for the solids and shimmers and I lay my nail flat into the powder for glitters, flakes and foils. That helps me get the thinnest application possible. I know I've heard some people say that you can't really use chunky glitters when your nails are super short. Well, I totally disagree and I'm going to prove to you guys in this Manny that you absolutely can use chunky glitters because that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm even going to do a little design with the chunky glitter on my middle finger. So when I did my middle finger, the, since my nails are so short, the first dip I did over the entire nail and the second dip I only did about slightly over halfway across the nail vertically because I don't want the nail to get super thick since they're so short and since I'm using glitters and I'm a sloppy dipper I like to go through and add my clear over the nails that are gonna stay solid before I dip any glitter and then I add the clear I activate them and then I go through and dip the glitter this way I don't contaminate any of my gorgeous solids and I do the same thing with shimmers I don't contaminate them before I dip the glittered nails when you're doing short nails and it's a chunky glitter you don't want to get a ton of the chunkies on that first dip so you can shake up your dip a little bit but you're not looking for a majority of the chunky glitters to be sitting at the top. You just want to get a nice coverage that the dip is you know, covered on your nail, but then on the second dip, that's where we're gonna get a majority of the chunky glitter. So I got a few on my thumb and I think a few on my ring finger. And I like to keep a piece of masking tape on a on usually my pointer finger on the opposite hand to press down the glitters. This just helps me because I had contact dermatitis back in the fall of 2022 and my skin just got itchy from touching like dip powders and stuff too much. So that's something to be really aware of just because you don't get a gel allergy from using dip powders and liquids because they're totally different, you know, you're using dip liquids, you still can get contact dermatitis and itchy. So I'm really, really careful. I don't touch the liquids. I don't touch the powders as much as I possibly can. Now, when you're doing that second dip for the chunkies, that's when you really want to shake the glitters up that are in your little dip cup. Or if you don't have a dip cup, you can use a cupcake liner. You shake them up really well so that a bunch of the chunky glitters come to the top and that's where you want to lay your nail. Then you can go through and place glitters. 
years. And that really helps me whether my nails are long or short, but especially when they're short, you don't wanna pick up a ton of the chunky glitters right away. So it's easier just to go through and place a couple. And especially because your nails are really short, you only have to place a couple chunky glitters. So I wanted to do like a color block ombre type effect on my middle nail where it wasn't like a full ombre that I sprinkled all the way across, you know, vertically, but it just gave me a little bit of a design and I placed some chunky glitters right along the line of my nail where it would like technically, I guess you could call it like a color block. So once you've placed all your glitters, then, then you can press them down again with your finger that has the masking tape on it, or you can also use painter's tape. It doesn't stick to those I've noticed. And if you're using a chunky glitter dip that really does not lay beautifully, um, the one that I'm using laid so well, I didn't need to do this, but you can also take a couple drops of activator over your nail. Don't, don't rub it down on it and then hold down like a piece of plastic baggy or something like that to really hold the glitters down. But I didn't need to do that because this chunky glitter laid so beautifully. So I was just able to go through with my clear dip powder and encapsulate the tops of the glitters. I have separate clears for all my different powders. I have a clear for solids, a clear for shimmers, and then a clear for glitters because I make a mess. And you can see in my glitter, in my glitter clear, it is full of a bunch of colored glitters. So I really like to make sure that I keep that separate. And if you don't want to buy three separate clears, you can always go and just get some cheap little jars off Amazon and split up your clear that way. After I pour the clear dip powder over, I like to tap my nail into the clear a couple times just to make sure the liquid is fully soaked up so that it all gets into the little nooks and crannies of the glitter. And when I go to file and shape that it doesn't buff off. That's another trick that I learned. Oh, I've learned that a while ago because I was doing my clears too thin and then I ended up buffing through the clear and getting some of the glitter like messed up because if you buff too hard in your glitters or file too hard in them, it can kind of turn them like silvery or other colors and you definitely don't want to do that. Before we go over the top coating, if you're still struggling with how to dip your nails, make sure you check out the link in the description and I, it'll be my first pinned comment. I just released a Dip Nails 101 guide where I go over every single detail I have about how to dip your nails from prep to finish. After I finish applying all my clear and then I brush it off, I activate it and then I file and shape. And I want to go through the top coating process, talk about some things that really have helped me. So I wipe off my nails with ice purple alcohol after I'm done filing and shaping. And then you want to go with your activator. And this is very dependent on what liquids you're using. So I'm using OG dip powder liquids and those liquids work differently. The activator and the top coat timing is different. You want to actually use them together. So you do heavy activator on five nails and then you go wick count to 10 and go back in to the first nail that you activated and start your first layer of top coat. Whenever I'm doing top coating, regardless of the brand that I'm using, I always float my top coat layers. I do that on the first and second layers and that's helped me to not contaminate my brushes as much. I am very, very careful about floating my top coat over. It's just something that I do that makes it easier and less likely to contaminate. Once I'm finished with the first layer, I immediately go in with the second layer, floating that as well over each nail and then capping my edges. I have tons more dip nail tutorials, so if you're still struggling with dip nails lifting, make sure you check out this next video where I go over the top 10 reasons I found that your dip nails are lifting. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.